Circle High Ranch here in sunny, beautiful Toledo, Ohio. I'm Ken. It's been three weeks. It's hard to believe it's been three weeks. I haven't taken three weeks off of this show since we started the show. But the holidays were on Fridays, Jeffrey. That's true. Jeffrey's here. Uh, Miss Penny has taken the day off today. We've got some stuff to catch up on. What did we all tune in for? We tuned in to check out the brand new from Reverend Guitar Six Gun H. P. P. The H for the party out back the PP for the business in the front this is uh, I've been told by my research department uh, which is usually sitting in that chair over there by the laptop um, that this is the first production guitar to feature this pickup configuration uh, I don't know if that's true or not but couldn't find an example anyway uh, not in any sort of mass quantities as it were like we do anything in mass quantities but we're doing our best to keep up, folks. We're committed. The Six Cun HPP was born uh, in 2020 um, out of the um, Wildwood Guitars exclusive HSS Sparkles. Um, 
Lance over there at Wildwood is uh, one of our uh, salesmen extraordinaire, and um, he had had a lot of requests for an HHS six gun from a few of his regular customers, and so they did an exclusive run. And uh, as we put that guitar together, um, we had never offered an HSS, nor did we have any plans to do that, uh, because Mr. Naylor never liked the way the pickups were out of balance in a traditional HSS or HSH style guitar. And I understand that that's a thing and that there's a lot of workarounds um, around that. Uh, a lot of the guys that use a, a traditional, um, you know, Strat style guitar that have an HSS configuration will use the neck pickup with a fuzz pedal for leads and uh, the bridge pickup with overdrive for rhythm stuff and then just go wherever they need to go for clean tones if they're using clean tones or whatever and that's part of the the beauty of that setup but it's a little esoteric kind of a thing and that's if you want it to balance properly and then there's guys like Stevie Vai Stevie, is it alright if I call you Stevie? <laughs> I'm sure he's watching, I'm sure he's watching <laughs> Uh, who um, really likes that thinned out tone of having that single coil between the humbuckers and if you listen even to his recorded music when he gets into a lot of rhythm stuff he goes to that ultra clean like lower output sound and those pickups are out of balance sort of on purpose because it's part of his style but that's not a thing that Naylor and I are particularly into and especially Joe. Joe just never liked that way out of balance thing with a traditional HSS or HSH instrument and hence the HPP was born. Um, so with the HSS that Wildwood uh, is selling, I don't know if they have any left, I don't know if they have plans to order more, N not within the first half of this year anyway. Mm. Um, Joe devised a system so that the bass contour only worked on the bridge pickup. Um, so that you could roll the bass out of the bridge pickup, uh, therefore reducing the, um, really, the bass <coughs> contour on a humbucker as you guys know, uh, you do lose some output because you're rolling away a, a b giant portion of the frequency response, of course. Um, and so it, with only the bass contour affecting the bridge humbucker, you could get uh, a, a wide array of balanced tones out of the Wildwood exclusive six-gun HSS guitar. Now on to this. The whole time Joe was working on that, Joe was thinking, you know, I've got an easy fix for this. And, uh, and he called me and bounced this idea off of me, and I was just, I was ecstatic right out of the gate, wasn't I, Jeff? No, sure. Did I come running into your office and was like, dude, Joe's got a great idea. Did I do that? Uh, I can't remember. I bet I did. Happens I, a lot. You, it happens so often yeah. that, yeah, it does, it happens a lot, that, yeah, the, the, the individual instances tend to get lost. Um, but I was, yeah, I was really excited about it, A, because I like different, and B, because I like everything. I like a bridge humbucker. Um, I always have, and that's sort of my mainstay. Uh, my main instruments, as a matter of fact, are just single Huevos 90 in the Mayway, yeah. and uh, I'm good with that. Uh, but I love the our Jetstream 390 and the Charger 390, and big, big into it. And so this is sort of like a best of both worlds things for me. And uh, i sorry I meandered on with that guitar there a little bit uh, in the beginning, maybe a little bit longer than I usually do, but um, it was fun to uh, run through the wide array of tones that are available here. Uh, and I will go back to this clean sound, and of course, there, I, I've got the controls wide up. We know what a bass contour does, and so we're, I'm not going to get into that. Now, rest assured, the bass contour affects all of the pickups on the 6-gun HPP. No need for trickery in a guitar like this. Uh, it is fun to be able to actually be on that neck pickup and roll the bass out. Very traditional Fender-y uh, style tone there. And then rolling the bass in. There you have it. The Reverend sound. I like to think that um, that part of the reverence sound, Jeffrey, is a uh, P90 on a bolt-on neck guitar. Yeah. I mean, it's just something that, that Joe's been on about from the very beginning, the slingshots and the slingshot customs. Um, and then when we started doing the, the Jetstream, obviously, and the Charger 290, and then the double agent with that neck 
pickup. I mean, this this neck P90 is, is very much a reverend thing. And then just like the Jetstream 390, as uh, I say all the time, and Johnny Cola knows what's coming, but uh, when you're in this position, it's like a Strat on steroids. Mm. Because you still get that quacky, phasey thing, yet there's bottom edge. And then just my Klon clone, just a mild overdrive. That's responsive to your picking thing, so you can pick, you know, the, the, it's, the pedal's on. And I'll even turn the gain up just a little bit. Pick lightly. Nice clean sounds, and then you dig into it a little bit with your fingers. And that's on the uh, middle neck, the middle pickup itself. I don't feel it's in the way, I, I, but I have a tendency to pick right here. Um, I know some people do, and if you don't like that middle pickup being in the way, this guitar may not be for you. I understand, which is why we make the double agent. Uh, I think the middle pickup tone is... is And then, of course, the quack that comes with having the middle and the bridge together. And if you really want it to sound like your, you know, your stratty thing, then you gotta roll off the bass contour. the thing and then of course the rock or the twang of that humbucker can we talk about colors jeff can we talk about colors yeah man i'll, I'll let you talk about whatever you want to talk about all right uh this is mine this is the uh prototype this is the black one with the maple board i'm I'm a big fan of this look, mm -hmm. the all black guitar with the maple board. It's my favorite. It's a good one. Uh, when I saw this guitar, I was like, it will be mine. And it's mine. Oh, yes. Uh, I used it in the studio the other day, but I'm the drain of our own the trainer's tracks. Uh, we're doing a thing where I got to do this uh, this uh, clean tone thing uh, where I'm just like strumming some chords with the, with the bar. <laughs> Pick up, filling up nice mm -hmm. and fat. Yeah, baby. Mm -hmm. First up, we have Reverend's famous coffee burst. Uh, and uh, notice the uh, beautiful Moto guards on all the colored versions of this thing over here. Moto, mother of toilet seat. People hate to hear that, but let's call it what it is. Mm. And uh, the coffee burst with Palfero fingerboard. We have the luscious avocado burst 70s refrigerator uh, with a roasted maple board. And of course, Reverence Chronic Blue, our own Chronic Blue, making an appearance on the end. And so these are the four colors of choice for 2021. Mm -hmm. um, everybody seems to be getting about equal attention. I always think when we do this, it always seems like initially uh, the weird one gets all the attention. So everybody's been like, oh, that avocado burst. Oh, I got to have that avocado burst. And yeah, it's pretty cool. Uh, but um, when the pictures of the coffee burst went out, that seems to be the one that's... Uh, it's getting the most comments coffee burst in the moment. Coffee burst in black really do it for me. Yeah, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I can dig it. I can yeah. dig it all. Yeah. Six gun HPP, brand new from Reverend for 2021. Um, and j not that I feel like I have to explain myself, but I talk too much. So here you have it. Uh, but we had hoped to actually launch this guitar. Um, believe it or not, not at the NAMM show. We were looking at launching this guitar on Thanksgiving weekend. And uh, the COVID thing has got just so many things screwed up in our supply chain and our ability to get this stuff out to dealers that um, we, we just didn't have them ready. And, uh, and we tried and it didn't happen. Uh, but unfortunately, <laughs> we already had advertising in place mm. and which is why you've, um, 
you've seen this guitar for the last few weeks without any uh, actual guitars shipping to anyone. It's happened and more than once now. Uh, <laughs> the COVID has snuck up and bit us in the ass a couple of times this mm -hmm. year, just with logistical stuff like that, yeah. you know. And it's, it's the same thing that everybody, I know everybody's excited about the Gristle 90. I am, nobody is as excited as I am. Well, no, Greg is way more excited than I am. Let's be clear. There's no secrets out on that. Yeah, no, Greg's real excited. Uh, but that that's that suffered from the same fate. Um, it, you know, everything went back um, 90 to 120 days because Fishman was closed for 90 to 120 mm -hmm. days. And it just, everything just, and then when they came back online, uh, working the new stuff wasn't exactly their main priority. When they came back online, they had to fill the orders that they had from other, you know, manufacturers. I know, I know, but there are other manufacturers out there. Just so you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mostly though, with the uh, with the Fishman, there's a lot of them acoustics, mm. and they got they make them pickup systems for them acoustic guitars. So, uh, but now they got caught up, and now we have a plan. And so before you ask, the Gristle 90 will be out. Uh, we're looking at the first run shipping in March. And I'm sorry that that took so long, um, but it's coming. But what's here now? This. And uh, next week, I'm going to be sitting right here talking to you guys about the GPS. We're really excited about that, too. And we're going to save all the questions about that for next week. Mm. Uh, right now, we're talking about the 6-Gun HPP. Karina Body Roasted Maple Neck Locking Tuners. Your tone jack, humbucker in the bridge, two P90 pickups. Jeffrey, does anybody have any questions? And there's an array of questions. Oh, there's an array of questions. I'm so glad because I'm sick of the listening. I'm going to go talk. from the earliest on. That's so. what you got to do. That's yeah. what you got to do. Otherwise, and, uh, you get I'll try to. And lost. I'll try to. I'll try to keep them to 300 words or less. Hmm. Well, Victor A. McCoy. Hey, Vic. Wants to know why we left Michigan. Oh wow, that's mm -hmm. a weird question. Um, well, like I said, it's an array. It's an array. Uh, I was born and raised in the Detroit area. Um, I left Michigan uh, in 2020 to move to Toledo for a band that was doing reasonably well. And uh, I started coming down here to play with them. And I met a little gal. And uh, it sucked me into the Toledo music scene, which I thoroughly enjoyed. Uh, my Detroit band played in Toledo often, so I had a lot of friends down here. So moving down here was sort of a natural thing. Uh, I was very good friends with Mr. Naylor, and when I originally started working for Mr. Naylor, I drove up to Michigan in order to work for him. Uh, one hour and 40 minute commute from Sylvania, Ohio to Warren. Did it for two and a half years. Um, when Penny and I took over the company from Mr. Naylor, we split the distance with them. Um, put the business in Western Livonia, um, which was just a little under an hour for me, uh, no big deal, um, and ran the business from there for six years. Uh, all the while, Reverend was very much embraced by uh, the music scene in Toledo, where the live music scene is very, very active. So we just had a lot of friends and a lot of players down here using our guitars. And as the company grew, um, a, our warehouse manager is Chris Nolinsky. He's the bass player from Pulp of Floyd. He's a very, very good friend of mine. Our sales manager is Zach Ward, who I knew from working at a local music store here in Toledo. And we had been friends with him for many, many years. Um, our other um, salesman here, Seth, uh, plays in a band with me called the Zimmerman Twins. Um, as guys that I knew needed employment and I could see the niche that they filled here, um, I was hiring them. And as we grew, because when we started in 2010, it was just me and Zach Green and Penny and Joe. And uh, as we've grown, um, I've been able to fill the roles with a lot of people that I knew that needed work. Uh, Chris needed a job and I had one for him. Um, and at one point then we realized that Joe had quit coming in every day because he prefers to work at home without the distractions. Um, he's got a beautiful drawing set up in his home up in Troy, um, a beautiful drafting setup where he hand draws all of these designs and a killer workbench area and all that kind of stuff. So there's no reason for him to be here every day. Um, and at one point there were six of us driving up to Livonia every day and that got a little silly. Um, and then we completely outgrew our space. And I looked in that area for a building and everywhere between here and there uh, to try to find the appropriate building to put Reverend in. And I ended up finding that building in Toledo's western suburbs. And we're in a building, the Circle R Ranch. <laughs> it's almost like they made 
the space that we use for our business model and the size we are right now, it's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. And um, once I, I, and it was reasonably priced, and once I, I, I just knew it. Um, I did have, and, and there, there was some weirdness with the state of Michigan government-wise too, but we're not going to get into that mess. That you already whole. passed your 300 words. Oh, right? yeah, I already passed my well 300 passed. words. Anyways, the writing was on the wall, so we came here to Toledo, and I'm going to tell you this in no uncertain terms, Michiganders, um, having grown up in the Detroit area and having lived in the Toledo area for 20 years, um, I don't know what it is about Detroiters and Michigan people. I don't know why you hate Toledo. I, I, it's just that thing that people do culturally. I, I, mm -hmm. I don't understand it. Uh, I've been playing great gigs here for over 30 years, and I'm surrounded by really cool people down here, and most of the Detroit musicians that I know that play down here regularly agree with me and understand. Uh, that it's just a cool place. It is what it is. Um, I have nothing against my Detroit roots. Our ad agency for years was, uh, was based in the Detroit area. Uh, I play in bands that are still based in the Detroit area. You're 45 minutes away. It took me longer to drive from Plymouth to Mount Clemens uh, than it took me to drive from Livonia to Sylvania. Yeah. So there you have it, folks. I love Detroit. That was I love Detroit too, man. <laughs> I'm a Lafayette, Coney Island. Yeah. You know, I probably gonna go tomorrow. Damn. Get some Sweetwater chicken. Milk. I went Wednesday to record. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I don't have any problems with the Detroit area whatsoever. Just logistically, it was the way it happened. So here we are. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I hope that answered your question. I, I know I used too many words. Be. Yeah. Uh, now we have to do a speed round. Yeah, well. You struck a nerve because I was just there. I was just up hanging out with yeah. Navarro and everybody and yeah. shit. I, I love Detroit, too. Love it, um, love it, love it. So Francisco Sebastianelli. Wants to know, no more trick shot guitar on the list? No, not right now. Um, there's a whole other model coming that has been completely eclipsed by the six gun HPP, the GPS, and what we're doing with Greg. Mm -hmm. There's a whole other thing that's going to be sneaking out there that I'm not going to even talk about because a, a boy's got to have a secret or two. Yeah. Should we move you know on? what I mean? And somehow <laughs> we've managed to keep that one a secret. Um, so, what has happened, I'm going to keep this brief, Jeff, I mm -hmm. promise. Um, the demand for some of our guitars exceeded our ability to manufacture them. And so in order to put out some of the new product that we wanted to put out this year, we had to make tough choices. And um, for now, the trick shot has suffered. That was a tough choice that we had to make. This does not mean this is it, that it's gone forever. Uh, we, are, we are just, we're in a growth phase. And once we figure out how to manage that growth and, and up our production, without being stupid, up our production in a nice, smooth, mm -hmm. linear way where the company stays healthy. As we grow, I have every intention on bringing the trick shot back. I would love, we're still in the back of our minds. There's a new version of the Manta Ray that's coming. There are things that have gone away from our lineup that will be back. I just don't know when. Indeed. Indeed! Uh, Scott wants to know, how do you guys decide which models get which pickups, such as HA5s versus rail hammers? Well, uh, we're gonna we're gonna shelve that question for Mr. Naylor. Uh, sometime within the next few weeks, I would like to have Joe on this show, and and I'm not gonna be able to do. I'm not, he's not gonna come down. Joe's uh, Joe's mom lives with them, and Joe has been very careful during the COVID because he's got a 90 year old, uh, 90. She's she might be 96 now. Um, so Joe hasn't really been going out too much or whatever, uh, but uh, we have the capability, from what I understand, to bring Joe in and do the split screen show or whatever, and I would love to have Joe on and have you be able to ask him that question personally, because cool. Joe does all the design work on the guitars, and so Joe is the guy who thinks, you know, well, maybe this is more appropriate for a rail hammer, or maybe this is more appropriate for our traditional pickups or whatever, and I, I think it's really... A lot of it has to do with the audience that he's aiming for, and he has all of that stuff. And I just go, yeah, man, I could sell that. Yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah. I or know. I go writing into Jeff's office and go, dude! <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mark Healy. Hey, Mark. How you doing, bud? Mark uh, Healy. He's got a he, question. He's got Pink he Matt West, too. He says, the neck profile on the Kyle Shut signature the same as all the other bolt-ons? It's really, really close. It just feels different. There's more finish on it, which gives the the like it feels thicker which is weird and it might be thicker by like a mill 
you know, because of the, of the, the extra paint or whatever. But um, other than that, we do have the same uh, neck profile, that same medium C, um, you know, so it's going to be um, a little more, it'll, it'll feel the same around the third fret and around the 12th fret where it really feels different on the set neck models, set neck models is when you get into the first position because um, with the traditional bolt-on style neck you have this extra wood behind the nut and this is not it's not like a volute in the traditional sense that you would think of like with the old g brand guitar or whatever but there is extra wood down here when you're playing in the first position and the set necks with the tilt back headstock just go smoothly there so it seems thinner right here but other than that it shapes the same boom boom uh Che Bruda, may yeah, or may not be pronouncing that correctly. Mm -hmm. so what are the odds right. of seeing a 390 of any sort with the Fluence Madness? Yeah. That's a good question. Um, boy, it's tough with the Fluence pickups um, because it's always, it always involves more than just putting a third pickup on with the Fluence. They're, they, it's a whole they, system. Yeah, it's a system and the pickups interact with each other and I'm not technically qualified to answer that question. Sort of like when, when, uh, when Greg and I get asked about lefties on the Greg models and the Fluence pickups and stuff like that, it's not just a matter of, mm. it's not just a matter of putting those right. pickups in. There's, they gotta be flipped. Yeah, they're, they're, the polarity has to be correct and, and there's, because of the uh, electronic wizardry there's other issues that need to be addressed. Um, so I don't really know. I, I, I tell you, we're, it, we haven't even approached that subject yet. Mm. Wait, yeah. Shit, we don't even have the guitar out yet. <laughs> right. Yeah. We're working on it, though. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, so Steve Zinn. Hey, Steve. He says, a week ago, you posted a collage picture of upcoming Reverend guitars for 2021. Did I detect the triumphant return of Oceanside Green? And if so, what model is that? Charger HB? I'm not allowed to say. Ooh. So boys got to have some secrets. Yes, the aforementioned secret that yeah. the boy must have. Yeah, geez, we've spilled the beans on so much stuff. I got to keep one to myself, mm -hmm. right? I mean, yeah. I know all of your secrets. Oh, Jeffrey. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, well, moving on. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Rob Awkward. Brady, coming from the YouTube, wants to know if there's any plans to bring back the cream color for the bolt-ons. Uh, there's, boy, I don't have a specific thing in mind at the moment um, but that's probably not gonna be gone forever um, yeah. like just sort of like I was saying about the models um, we had such a high demand for a few things that we had to meet that we had to sort of make some difficult choices in what we were picking just based on sales I hate to do things just based on sales but I mean at some point you have to recognize that holy shit, I have 40 of these gold ones on back order. Mm -hmm. And the cream ones are on the shelf. So I think at the moment we need to lean into the gold or whatever the case right. may be. Doesn't mean that it's gone forever because those things change. Um, and when the cream tortoise guard thing gets hot again, the cream will come raging back into the line. So I hope that yeah. answers your question. Uh, Darrell. Hey, hey, there's Darrell. Darrell says, so is that middle position just the middle P90? Yes, it is. Uh, right. We don't, there's no, um, there's no uh, crazy electronic wizardry going on here. This is a very, very traditional five-way switch setup with no coil tapping on the humbucker. This is it. Uh, so he so just put money down on a Deathstream 390, so he just wants to know if there's any difference between that middle position on these two guitars. There is not. Okay. Nope, nope. Um, okay. Nope, the, the neck and middle positions are the same. There it is, though. That position two on this pickup, man. Guitar. Woo! It's like like the Knopfler thing, but fatter. You know what I mean? Got some good some meat on that bone. So, uh, once upon a time in the West, or as I like to say, once upon a time in the Midwest. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, Adam Brink, I don't know, it's an abbreviated name here. Okay. 
It says, are you guys moving away from the tortoise shell pick cards? There seems to be less and less of them. And I know there's one in the background, but just... <laughs> Yeah, we have been we have been moving away from it again. This is this is another great question for Joe, um, but Mr. Naylor has a tendency to to sort of see like look around and and we we keep an eye on what everybody else is doing versus what is moving for us and what is selling for us, and so when we offer you know six black guitars and three of them have black pick guards and three of them have tortoise pick guards and then we get start getting requests hey can I get a black pick guard for my buckshot hey can I get one of those parchment pick guards for my buckshot when people start requesting to move away from the tortoise after a while we're like well okay so maybe maybe the tortoise thing has run its course this is a personal preference thing of course but our goal is to try to make as many people happy as we can I guess and so we just sort of we sort of take that immediate feedback that we get from people um, but when people start, it's always a sign around here for, for me and, and Tim, who um, and answers a lot of our customer service questions and stuff. Um, when we start getting a lot of requests to change the pick guard to a certain model, then mm -hmm. it's time for us to think about changing the pick guard <laughs> on it. And that was happening with the tortoise over the last 12 months. I mean, yeah. we were getting a lot of requests for parchment guards or black guards for the guitars that were featuring tortoise. I don't have a feeling one way or the other. I think that this is bad to the bone myself. I mean, the tortoise, on some colors, it's just such yeah. a win, man. Some places, it's you know, places. yeah. This with the dark neck and the tortoise mm. and the green, forget about it. Forget about it. Forget about it. Uh, Kate Ruckus has a good one here. Oh, oh, oh a good one. Oh, yeah. I've been waiting. She said, oh, yeah. I've, heard that, I've heard you mention that Joe Naylor is in a band. I'm really interested in hearing what his music would sound like. Anywhere to check them out online? You want to take that for me, Jeff? Well, I mean, he is in a band. Oh, he is so in a band. He's in a band called Burning Things. Yes, he is in a band called Burning However, Things. However, I do not believe their music is available online at this moment. Huh. Yeah, I don't know if they're... They're recording. They recorded. Yeah. No, they, they recorded. Ain't done yet. Yeah, uh, but I don't think they've they've mastered that. Uh, yeah. That Coming that, soon, that, coming dare soon. we say. Uh, but there's live... I bet there's live clips on the YouTubes yeah. from the NAMM show from last Nam year. Show, and, right. and some of the... Because I've done, I've done a couple shows with them. Did a show with them with the Traders. Did a show with them with the Polka Floyd show. Instrumental and, uh, rock. I saw people with their cameras out, mm -hmm. so it's got to be out there somewhere. Yeah. Burning Things, it's called, and it's awesome. And Joe, Joe's a great player, and he's some of these songs are, are things that I've been listening to him play for many years, <laughs> as he like demos guitars and things like that. And it was so cool for me to see that band and listen to him have actual songs composed mm -hmm. of some of these riffs and stuff that I've heard him do. And then his drummer is like, animal. The dude's a machine. <laughs> it's, it's really the Biggest cool. drum kit. Yeah, biggest seen. drum kit I've ever. <laughs> and I don't mean like biggest drum kit, not like Neil Peart. No. I mean just like the drums are like floor <laughs> tom, like this bit. The bass is so deep. And he plays with logs. <laughs> like the, also the biggest drumsticks I've ever seen. It's really something. It's super cool. Hopefully there's some yeah. clips of it online you can check out. It's great. Yeah. Uh, so Delisle Music says, loves that guitar. Great job again. Is there any plans for a Charger HPP? Well, yeah. that's a good question. Good job. Oh, yeah, planting plant a seed, are you? Planting a seed. Oh, geez, I, I, you know what? I, I, feel, I feel a phone call coming from Russo Music. Uh-oh. <laughs> that's a whole thing. Yeah, it could be a whole thing for them. Yeah. Yeah, interesting. Hmm, mm. good idea. Mm. You know what you should do? You should call Scott at Russo Music. <laughs> and say that you're looking for one. Got an idea for you, bud. <laughs> Scott's going to be like, dude, <laughs> don't do that. No, he won't. He'll be grateful. He'll, he'll be like, cool. People who people want one of these. So, Jared Rydell cool. wants to know when those will hit stores. They are shipping this week. Boom. So, uh, I'm not sure all who has them all on order, but um, I mean, I'll go with the usual suspects. You know what I mean? Our, our, mm -hmm. uh, our, our regular crew that keeps everything in stock had them on order right away. So, Wildwood Tone Shop, Joe's Music, Russo probably Russo, and I'm missing people. I every time I get put on the spot like that, I always miss people and right. feel bad. True Tote in Santa Monica, and other stores here in Toledo, Heights Guitar, Small Box. I think they got them on order. Um, so they should be they should be going out. But I mean, I. I I literally think I have 40 of them going out next week. Yeah. 
Um, so they're, they're, they're going to start to spread out there, and uh, more will come. We ordered them heavily because I think this is, I think this is going to be a hit. It's a hit with me. I've already done, I've already done stuff. They're all it. hits with you. <laughs> yeah, they're all hits with me. That's <laughs> true. So uh, Michael Kilfoy says, "Hey Ken, what's the largest body bolt-on that's solid body?" Oh, that's an interesting question. It's probably the Greg. Jack it's Greg. I mean, yeah. I know that we don't Greg, want to overplay yeah, the yeah. largeness of it, but no, yeah, uh, the Jetstream series, yeah. the the Jetstream 390, the and the double agent and the jet double agent W and the Jetstream RB, um, those bodies are deceptively larger. Like this, this is on the six gun platform, and the six gun is just slightly narrower by maybe three eighths of an inch um, this way, and slightly longer. Than the jet streams are so it's a similar body it's definitely the Very the sort of reverend offset waist body shape or whatever but um uh, the is jet the stream Matt west on the jet stream body uh yes the Matt right. west is so on the jet stream body indeed gotta see him oh look at that. i mean from here I mean, yeah right you're yeah, not you really you're not really yeah. catching it um but uh, i mean they're all they're all similar in size uh the club king of course is the large bolt-on um, and that's a semi hollow with the spruce top, so you do get that sort of acoustic y thing going on with the Club King um, that, that you're not going to get with the Jetstream or whatever. But I would say that, you know, the Greg or the, um, or the Jetstream. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Uh, Frank Van Heck wants to know if the colors on the back are the same as the front. They are. You want to see? Carpet matches. You want to see? Should I get up? Sure. Oh, Jeffrey. <laughs> Should I get Every time I get, I'm always nervous when I get up in this show because oh, I can't see stuff. your head anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just do the tour. Shall we do the tour? There it is. Am I in there? Am I good? Mm -hmm. Ready? Here it comes. Ho, 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 ho. Oh, that guitar's a beauty. <laughs> and the avocado burst. <laughs> Hopefully we're getting a lot of little thumbs up clicks. Right? Yeah. That's what I'm hoping yeah. for. That's what a lot I of the That's what I live for. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there you go. Yeah. And Chronic Blue. Now I was talking about this guitar yesterday when I, I set it had it set up and brought up here. You know, this was this was kind of the sleeper for me because I wasn't really sure about there is no easy or simple source for white covers for the pickups. Your head's completely out of frame. I know. <laughs> I'm just talking to you. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, for whatever reason, uh, we just, for the, um, the 985s or P90s or whatever, white covers are, are just very, very difficult to source. Mm. And, um, and so I, I was, you know, the, the idea of the chronic blue with the black pickups, I was like, ah, I don't really know about that right. with the white and stuff like that. And, and looking at the computer mock-ups, I was like, yeah, it looks kind of cool or whatever. And then you see it in person, I'm like, oh, 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 oh that's sweet. I can mm -hmm. dig it. Uh, but I know I'm in, and I, I just, I'm heading off the white P90 cover pickups about that. I just don't know where to find them. And because uh, cream is, of course, readily available. Right. But that stark that's white. white. You know, um, and Joe had them on the, the slingshot and stuff, and the, and the uh, manufacturer that we were getting those from back in the day is gone. And so um, it is what it is. It is what it is. Um, Kyle Smithers. Oh, hi, Lace. It's my boy Kyle. Hi, yeah. Kyle. He wants to know what the pickup configuration is on the Gristle 90. 90 90. Mm. Uh, yes, two Fluence, Fishman Fluence. Uh, P90 style pickups um, and set up, you know, similar to Greg's, uh, the Gristle Master, um, there is a tone shift in the control plate for them. It gives them uh, a little bit of a different EQ thing. Greg can get into all, you can see Greg. Greg is probably playing it right now somewhere, just like right now somewhere Billy Corgan is posing for a magazine cover with his prototype again. Yes. So we can make it three. <laughs> Um, in the same vein, Van wants to know when the 290 Gristle Master will hit. Yeah, March. Yep. We're looking at March. We're doing our best. 
Um, I had mentioned it earlier, Fishman, um, Fishman was shut down and everything that we, we were going to do with that guitar was supposed to be at the end of last year, the beginning, right at the beginning of this year, and we weren't able to get them in in time. We weren't able to get the pickups in time to do that because of their shutdown, um, which is just a thing that happened this year. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, because of the shutdown and Greg being cooped up, you know, it's it, as alluring as what Tosa, Wisconsin is, it wasn't enough to contain Greg for the whole COVID period. Poor Greg was cooped up in there with his prototypes, and he was like, oh, I got to play my guitars. And then, so everybody knows. Oh, whoops, I didn't know my camera was on. <laughs> So, uh, so yeah, I I know that seems frustrating that we, because believe me, it seems frustrating for you that we've been talking about it for this long and we don't have any. It's fifty. We've had them here in the building for quite a while. Yeah, like prototypes. Yeah, we we've have been looking the, at these for a while. Yeah, we have. We've been looking at these things for a long time. <laughs> Good point. Uh, the Dazzler Mac wants to know if there's any plans to reintroduce a hardtail six gun. I don't have any plans. The trim version of the six gun has outsold the hardtail 50 to 1. Um, it just didn't, never really connected in the hardtail uh, version. So, and so yes, there is all of the anomalies that go along with the floating trim on this guitar and love it or hate it. I apologize for that. Uh, but I will always recommend a trim setter. Uh, my buddy Kevin Gare. Does a really cool little thing, the trim setter thing, works in our guitars, done it. Um, if you're worried about bending and such. Um, same thing with the with Gil's guitar, the GPS features a Wilkinson trim. Gil is not a trim guy, um, but he likes the tone of a guitar that has had all that wood removed for the trim, because it does sort of affect the tone. It gives you a little bit of a more of a um, more of a hollowness, especially in your uh, out of your quack settings as it would be two or four you can actually hear it and so we just block the trem on the ones for his him personally because he's a double stop bend guy so but yes uh as for now they're just all available with the old wilkinson mm -hmm. hi kate and trev uh so devin says hello from texas he just got his first reverend that was passed on by his late grandfather Wow. It's a Jetstream 390 in a very cool blue. He wants oh, to know cool. what colors we offered in the 2007 range. What what blue hue might that be? Whoa. Yeah, that's a deep one. Whoa, boy. I Do you don't... remember 2007? <laughs> <laughs> I Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, no, I do. Um yeah, that is it's similar to Superior Blue, but it's it's Italian metallic blue, I think mm -hmm. Joe called it. And we did some hardtail Jetstream 390s with black pickguards and cream pickups in that blue. That's a sharp guitar. Um, yeah, the closest thing that we have to that is the superior blue that we're doing on some stuff that's behind me here on this uh, Wildwood exclusive Charger 290. What a beaut. Is that in the shot or am I just pointing no, it on my it's, shoulder it's for there, no reason? Partially. Uh, um, what was that Charger 290 that we did for CME? Was that superior blue or is that... No, that was Great, uh, Great Lakes, Lakes Blue. Blue. Yeah, yeah, a little which lighter is, than. Superior. Yeah, and the Superior is probably a little brighter, like um, in like color wheel terms. The mm -hmm. Superior Blue is cleaner than that Italia Blue of your Jetstream, whereas the uh, Great Lakes Blue is a little dirtier, a little more green, yeah. kind of like the Great Lakes. Yes, <laughs> a little more green. <laughs> but um, Superior Blue is crystal clear blue, baby. So. Steve Bronstein. I know Steve. He says, is the humbucker on the HPP closer to the trim? And would it be a touch brighter than a double agent because of that? Stumped me. Stumped me. Good question for Nailer. I think it is a little closer. I think it is. I yeah. bet you're right. I bet you're right. I hadn't really thought about it. Yeah. That's interesting. I don't have one here to look. I don't have one here to hold it up to. I bet you're right, though. Yeah. That. Mm-hmm. Stumped me already. Mm -hmm. Oh. I don't get stumped on here very often. Well, I see that's why Naylor should be in that's the That's a few split now screen. that you've had to pass on. <laughs> He's telling me take I three get weeks stumped off, all man, the time. You get a little rusty. Yeah, I got a little rusty. Yeah. Got a little rusty. Yeah. Uh, Lobo wants to know what a Ken Haas Sig model might be like. Single the Wavy ninety. It like looks Italian. just like this, only it, it has does. a rail hammer, Huevos um, ninety in the bridge instead of our nine eight five. But other than that, that Matt. <laughs> it's, it's funny. I've told the story a million times. 
But one of the reasons why we make this guitar is when Matt West described his ultimate reverend to me, it was like he was describing to me my ultimate reverend. And I got so excited that we just started making it. <laughs> uh, but I, I think that the, um, I think that Joe's uh, Railhammer Huevos 90 pickup is my favorite bridge pickup of all time. I just, it just ticks all the boxes for me and, and works in all of my bands. And so um, I, I just love it. I love the way I can, I can use that pickup to get really, really bright, percussive, clean sounds. And then I can just pour piles of gain on it. And it does like metal. And there's like a, it says 90 in the pickup name. So you're not thinking metal, but it does it with a clarity and, and flonk, you know. Well, I mean, think about how much gain Billy plays, mm -hmm. you know. And Billy's signature rail hammer is, is very, very similar, just a little bit brighter with a little more mid-range. Um, and, and it totally wails. Yeah. So, yeah, man. Um, Wells306 from YouTube wants to know, when we're roasting our maple necks, are there strategies or cook times to determine how dark the necks become? Wow. He's a well done kind of guy. Yeah, that's uh, interesting. Um, well, that's not done here, my friend. Mm. So I don't have the specifics. Uh, this, again, this is a great question for Mr. Naylor because Mr. Naylor is the guy who uh, makes those calls on those, um, on those specific details. And so, um, I mean, by the time it comes to me, I am selling guitars with a light roast and a dark roast, and I like them both. I think they're really super cool. Uh, I don't, I don't find there's a tonal difference between the two, other than the look, and I like the look. I think the look is great. Um, but uh, as far as the specifically getting them into the kiln and how long we leave them in there and for what for, that is totally a Joe question, my man, and I, and uh, we, I will have to pick up on that at some other point. You got anything else for me, Jeffrey? What are nice. we getting on? We're going on an hour here, bud. We're getting there, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to have to. You want to take some more? Or how are you feeling? Oh, give me a couple more. Give me a couple more. All right. Jansen wants to know if there's any chance of seeing more pickup configurations on the Warhawk, like a dual humbucker RA or RB, for instance. Boy, I'm sorry. What happened this year was uh, there became fewer. We're actually uh, the, the only Warhawk that we're going to be offering in 2021 is the DAW, the trim version with the... Uh, um, with the humbucker and the P90 setup. Uh, yes, I mean, I would love to tell you that there will be more available in the future. We'll bring more back. Again, that guitar was just kind of a victim of we need to make room for some stuff, and so um, hard choices needed to be made. Uh, as we grow, that is on the very short list of things to come back is more pickup configurations on the Warhawk because it is a badass guitar it is a reverend all the way. It ticks all the reverend boxes with the body shape and the center ridge and the whole nine yards. It's a great guitar. And so, yes, you can expect to see more eventually, but probably not within the next 12 months. Next, Jeffrey. JD says, has the OG six gun been discontinued recently? Even with the new color options, it's gone from the site. It's gone from the site. Again, mm -hmm. yeah, That's same answer as the there. last one. Yeah. Yep. Love, love, to, love to see them come back, you know, at some point, but that was on the bottom of, the, um, of what you guys were buying or what the dealers were buying. It was, it was not, you know, um, it, you know, trying to be smart, and it's not easy. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, it is, it is also taking a short hiatus, but when we are able to increase our production, um, I would like to bring that back. I hate to see, I have such a hard time letting these things go. Mm -hmm. And companies let these things go all the time. You know what I mean? And uh, you know, the G brand made, isn't so still pushing out the, there. The G brand isn't still pushing the robot guitar, are they? Mm. <laughs> That's not apples to apples comparison because right. the six gun and the trick shot and the You're talking about Jai Rock? Are sweet. Yeah. So, um, yes, I, hopefully, like I said, we'll grow. We'll get them back. Yeah. Cool. Can I play this out, Jeff? Or you got anything yeah, else? and I would say just to the people wanting to hear all the different pickup sounds, we yeah. will be shooting demo videos of this. We will. So and we'll you have know a more what? comprehensive and extensive yes. look at the sounds that it will create. So be on we the are, we're going to shoot we're going to shoot those top of the week next week, and so we should have them out next week shortly. Yeah, I cool. can I can get a little of them out next week. Nice. 
Excellent. Then so. look for look for uh, look for a more comprehensive demo video next week. In the meantime, uh, I will just run you through uh, the clean sounds. There's that sweet neck. Position four, neck middle. Middle alone. Position two. And that bridge. Woohoo! What do you think, Johnny Cola? Thanks for tuning in, everybody. I'll be back here next week. We'll be looking at the GPS, look for some demo videos of this new six gun HPP. Woohoo!